All right, so we got Warhammer 40K lore explained for beginners. Let's get into the video. Warhammer 40,000 has the craziest, most complex and deep lore. Yes. I've ever oh seen in my anything. God. It yes. It's literally a meme in the community that <laughs> trying to explain Warhammer quickly is impossible. But I actually think this is something of a rite of passage for Warhammer lore YouTube channels to attempt to explain Warhammer quickly. And so that's what I want to do. With I like it though. For YouTube channels that are, that are trying to like put this large, obnoxious series. And when I say obnoxious, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying. It's big, bro. This series is so big for for YouTube channels to try to do that, bro. I respect you because like, bro, I couldn't do this to save my life. This video, I want to do my version of explaining. All right, let's see. Let's see. All let's see. of Warhammer <laughs> lore as quickly as possible. Let's see. Let's go. Let's see how he does. This video is actually getting uploaded tonight, by the way. So make sure you guys check this out. Yeah, part one present okay, setting. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I need to establish here before we actually get into what the lore is. The first thing to establish is the character of the Emperor of Mankind. Now, a lot of other fiction has an emperor or a central imperial figure, and Warhammer is no different, but I would argue this character is the coolest out of all the other emperors. A couple of things about the emperor. Number one, he's a perpetual. This means he's essentially immortal. He began with I've seen this guy a long, long time ago and has been living alongside us for centuries oh wow actually recently revealed that he's alexander the great or at least he was alexander the great this is one Wait, of his many what? lives that he had and, and he dies and he comes back to life and so because he is a perpetual eventually he starts trying to guide humanity towards a better future yo now, i did not know that keep in mind is the warp or the immaterium in warhammer there's another universe that runs parallel to our own and this is i know this immaterium or the warp and the warp is many different things i mean you could think of it as just a demonic yes dimension yes full of chaos yes gods. it's also a place that characters are able to use to do space travel it's also a well of crazy powers and ability that allow certain beings in our universe known as psychers to be able to tap into most of the crazy witchcraft and, and powers that you see in 40k are psychers tapping into the warp and in fact it's actually explained in the lore of warhammer that in our modern day like where we're at right now a lot of the tales of different wizards and witches and magic and a lot of our myths are actually coming from real people that we're able to tap into the warp. Okay, next huh? thing we gotta establish is the present setting of Warhammer 40,000 because when the game was originally conceived, it was just in the 40th millennia and there's constant war and mankind is fighting against the orcs, the Tyranids. But then the lore gets filled in with a lot of stuff that happens leading up to the present day 41st millennia. Currently, the Imperium of Man is a heavily centralized authoritarian regime. They're they're brutal they're fascist they destroy people that won't worship the emperor they fight constant wars against other aliens they take advantage of hive worlds where most of the humans grow up as essentially slaves and Dang. they mine resources that are then sent to terra or earth the that emperor sounds oppressive he's interred upon the golden throne it's a life-sustaining device that keeps his psychic presence alive the emperor is also worth Worshipped as a god across the Imperium. The Imperium faces countless threats, both external and internal. Chaos continues to Damn, who is that? war. Xenos <laughs> races pose a constant danger, and the warp itself is still threatening to expand and engulf all of reality. Hey, hey, let me just say something with this this hey, hey you know like what I've learned in all like the in like Warhammer videos that like I've reacted to. What I've learned is it's, it's like this whole Warhammer thing. It's just hell on earth, bro. It's just hell, it, it, bro. It's just, it's just hell, bro. Like it's not, it's nothing. Like there's no fancy way in saying it. It's just hell on top of hell on top of hell. That's just what it is. Like I, I, there is no good thing. Like the only good thing about it that I did learn was the what was it salamanders. I like them a lot. Other than that, bro, everything else is hell, hell, hell. If I can't lie to you, bro. 
Space Marines, the kind of oh, except for my guys, the Space Marines depicted on Warhammer art are out there fighting the good fight, defending yeah. the Imperium yeah. from heretics, they're good too. They're good too. aliens, and other. They're enemies. good too, but frankly, of course. It's not a good time. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a really dark, crazy yeah, place. It's, the Imperium it's hell, itself, yeah. technically the good guys, but also kind of horrible. But now let's Tarantino this, right? Let, let's go back in time. How did we get here? Let's first talk about the dark age of technology. Oh, oh, I know about this, but they were doing all types of evil stuff because they were so numb and stuff like that. Like the dopamine was cracked, right? This goes back to the 25th right? millennia and lasts all the way to the 29th millennia. During this period, humanity made extraordinary advancements in science, technology and colonization. They developed incredible feats of engineering, interstellar travel and artificial intelligence. They also discovered the warp and were utilizing the warp in a lot of this technology. They created these warp capable starships that allowed them to travel across Wait, the galaxy. humans were doing this? Terraforming technologies, which also pulled on the power of the warp. And then they made maybe one of the most important things ever, and that is sophisticated AI. So things were going great for humans. Human colonies started spreading throughout the galaxy and their dominion was massive. But then some bad stuff happened first thing that happened were these things called the men of iron which were advanced artificial intelligences yeah they became sentient and rebelled turning against humanity and having a massive war this war was known as the war of devastation and it Cooked. resulted in widespread loss of life the AI rebellion targeted human settlements, infrastructure, and military forces, causing a crazy amount of destruction. Entire worlds were laid waste, and the conflict escalated to crazy cataclysmic proportions. Eventually, humanity did destroy the Men of Iron and win the War of Devastation. But this led to a deep fear and a distrust of advanced artificial intelligence. That so you as a created. Result, the use of AI and technology was severely restricted and the Adeptus Mechanicus, the religious and technological organization, emerged to preserve the control of technological knowledge. This is very similar to what happens in the Dune series, where they also had a war with AI and then swear off AI totally. But things didn't just get better after the War of Devastation. In fact, the warp itself started going crazy in the galaxy, probably because of the advancement of all these humans and their emotional imprint upon it. A bunch of warp storms ended up cutting off interstellar travel and various human civilizations fell into isolation technological decline uh -oh. and barbarism uh -oh. so basically humans got really advanced technology spread out all throughout the galaxy then their ai turned on them they had a crazy war with ai the warp itself went bananas separated all of them and all these advanced human colonies out there in the galaxy degraded into really barbaric sometimes feudal states this era was known as the age of strife and all for nothing leads into the rise of the emperor of mankind and the great crusade uh-oh alexander the great the go the boy the goat the great crusade The Emperor of Mankind reveals himself as this powerful psychic being that's been with us forever and is here to help us go into the future. He begins something known as the Great Crusade to reunite humanity and bring order to the galaxy. And then, because the Emperor was also a genetic genius and really good with technology, he creates super soldier beings so one of okay. my favorite things about the emperor of mankind he's a lot like mr sinister from the marvel x-men books the first soldiers he creates for himself are the custodian guard eight they feet as his personal protectors and bodyguards and they were these massive human beings they were resistant to psychic attacks damn near perfect in the way that they could fight they had incredible technology and armor and weapons they're damn near perfect wow but there was a problem they were just way too hard to create and to replicate the emperor mm. couldn't really see himself conquering all of the galaxy with custodians that would just take forever <laughs> to create that many custodians so then he created 
created the Thunder Warriors. The Thunder Warriors were much easier to create than a Custodian Guard, but they were also crazy He's still eight powerful, foot, though. superhuman warriors. But there was a problem. The Thunder Warriors were unstable. But wow. They figured oh, they, they were, were crash good outs. enough to conquer and unify all of Earth, or Terra, so he took part in what was known as the Unification Wars. And with the Custodians by his side, he and the Thunder Warrior Army beat back all of these different warlords that were on Earth. The Emperor conquered all of Earth, but then he had him and his Custodians destroy all of the Thunder Warriors. Next up was the creation of the Primarchs. Wait, the Emperor what? created 20 genetically engineered beings. I know that, yeah. With incredible power. Yeah, I know, I know about this. I know he about used this. some of his own DNA, some of his perpetual baby mama's DNA. He also <laughs> made some kind of a deal with the Chaos Gods of the Warp. It's unclear if he was given a portion of power from Chaos or if he stole a portion of the power of Chaos. But either way, he took some of the Chaos power of the Warp and infused wow. it into these 20 Primarchs. But the Chaos Gods, who wow. for now you can just think of as these demonic beings in the warp. That oh, are I've seen that girl to the right. In the material universe. Yeah, they didn't like that he was creating these 20 immortal godlike demigods. Chaos yeah, demigods, basically, beings. yeah. And so while these Primarchs were still infants, the Chaos Gods disrupted the Emperor's plans and scattered the Primarchs across the galaxy. However, the Emperor still had the gene seed from the Primarchs, which is basically just a bunch of their genetic material, and he used the genetic material to create the Space Marine chapter oh. and so then the emperor had all of these different astartes all of these different space marines that are essentially the sons of these father primarchs and also they are essentially his own sons being yeah. made of his own gene seed and then he goes out into the galaxy and he rediscovers each primarch most of the Primarchs have become leaders of their respective domains on the different planets that they crashed on, but they all have unique upbringings, unique cultural influences, oh, and yeah. also unique abilities. This is one of the... Yes, some of them are... Yeah, yeah. We, we learned about... Uh, I think they call it uh, factions, right? F uh, fractions? Factions? One of the two. Yeah, bro. We, we learned about some... Yeah, some of them are... Yeah, so, some of these guys, bro, they're, they're a little cracked, bro. They're a little cracked in the head. I can't lie to you. Some of them are a little cracked. Now, again, uh, the Salamander Fraction, those are my guys. There's a, they, hey, those are, they're green, right? Those are my guys. Everybody else, y'all are weirdos, bro. I, bro, I heard that there was some, bro. Bro, I heard there was, like a, there was a fraction, bro, that was just pure crash out timing. Whenever they, uh, I think they, they, uh, they like, um, what did they do? They just like destroyed all the humans on the world or whatever. It was cr bro, it was crash out material, bro. But the salamanders, the the big scary intimidating dudes, bro, all they want is a hook. Best parts of the Warhammer lore and it allows each one of the primarchs to have like all kinds of unique attributes and we're going to get into that, but for this video, we'll just kind of leave it there. So after discovering all of the Primarchs and putting them to work to unify the rest of the galaxy, the Emperor goes back to Terra and he begins working on the webway. Essentially, he's just trying to really perfect space travel through the warp for the entire Imperium. But the Chaos Gods, who remember were keeping a close eye on all of this and had scattered all the infant Primarchs, yeah, well, they didn't like what was going on with the Emperor, so they start to corrupt the Primarchs. Horus, who was named as the oh, War Master man. over all of the Imperium army, was corrupted by the Chaos Gods tough. and started a rebellion. This oh, is known as tough. the Horus Heresy, and it happens in the 30th millennia, 10,000 years before Warhammer 40K. And wow. even though the rebellion itself only lasted for between seven to 10 years, its ramifications were felt forever, and it is the biggest part of the Warhammer lore Horus gets about half of the primarchs to flip to his side and there's this crazy big civil war a lot of devastation some chapters of space marine almost being wiped out completely many of the primarchs are killed and it all culminates with a crazy battle between the emperor and Horus himself well Horus is juiced up to the gills with a bunch of chaos god energy and the emperor is the emperor 
And so they're fighting. The Emperor doesn't want to kill Horus because he still kind of thinks of him as a son. Horus is taking a lot of shots at the Emperor, like really doing some serious damage to him. And then something flips in the Emperor. He decides Horus is no good. And he does a Kamehameha wave attack that not only destroys all of Horus's body, but it actually destroys his very soul. Most of the time in Warhammer, especially if you're a Primarch, you can die in the physical form, but your soul will go into the warp and it'll linger there. And some of them even come back to life, but there's nothing of Horus to come back to life. The Emperor destroys his very existence on every level of reality. Horus was obliterated, but in order to obliterate Horus, the Emperor used all of the last bits of physical energy that he had and it leaves his body completely decimated he's essentially a corpse at that point barely alive and he's dragged to the golden throne where he's put on life support and from there the emperor exists being alive mostly in the warp now and over a thousand psychic human beings a day are sacrificed to the golden throne as oh a way my to keep Lord, the Jesus emperor Christ. alive and that's it. Oh, I'm that sorry to use all of Warhammer. Man, I'm sorry to use the Lord's name in vain, but that's some sick stuff right there, bro. That's some nasty sick stuff right there, bro. And guess what? If I'm being honest with you, I know I'm a new booty. I know I'm a new member of the Warhammer uh community, but if I'm be if I'm being completely honest with you, bro, at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, let's just let's just keep it real. I don't want to be that guy, but Bro, it's your fault, bro. It's your fault. It's yours. From what I heard is you were making you were making all the babies, but then you went to the warp. Why would you go to the warp? I understand you wanted your babies to be all cracked out. I, I listen, I understand that. But you went to the warp of all places to get some magical lucky charms to put in their cereal? Are you dumb? What what's wrong with you? Why would you do that? Why couldn't you just make these babies your babies? And that, why couldn't you make bro? You could have made these babies just nice and secure. You went up to the warp and was like, yo, 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 you guys know I'm the emperor, right? <laughs> you know I've been do I I've been good for you guys. Uh let me get a let me get a mm, let me let me get let me get uh let me get a number two let me get a number nine let me get a number three and the warper is like the warper is like oh oh you're ordering food okay this food's for you right like you're not doing nothing slick with this food right okay cool okay let's hey hey hey, hey. let's pack everything up for the emperor yeah let's pack everything up they give you the stuff you then say oh okay well let me use some of this food that I'm getting. Let me use some of this magic and power and nutrients that I'm getting from the warp and let's mix it up with my kids. Why would you do that? To be honest with you, bro, it's your fault. Now, I know some Warhammer people might go crazy and be like, no, it's not his fault and da 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 da. It's the warp. The warp is evil. But like, bro, he went to the warp and like, you know, got some of the stuff and then mixed it up with his babies. Like, listen, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's how I see it, but. It was it is, man. Comment down below. Wait, I say please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and.